Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel and to another Friday night pen thoughts. And today is finally episode number 25. My voice may be a little strange, but I will explain that in a moment. And today it is the Lisboa, 24 de junho de 2022. So, many months after the last episode of these videos, and according to the records it was in February, um, I'm back for another of these videos. And we will start, as usually, showing the pens that I have with ink for today. So, let's start. Pens for this video. And the pens are one, these. This is a Parker Inflection which is an interesting pen from around the year 2000. It has a little bit of tarnishing there on, the, on that ring, but the pen is kind of fun. I like it. I wrote with it a, a lot some years ago. So this is the Parker Inflection. And it is a flighter version because it is made of steel and with gold trim. And it has this arrow, as you can see. The arrow is a very stylized way, not as the usual Parker arrow. And it has a fine nib. And inside it has Parker Quink Green ink. So. This is one of the pens I have for today. The ink is this one. This is a vintage cartridge box. I will not say vintage, but it is an old one. And it is now empty because the last of these cartridges that I have, that I had, is inside of the pen. The other pen I have with ink for today is this little Caveco Sport which is a special edition for Fontoplumo. I received it recently and this was a choice for today. So, this is the Caveco Sport Chocolate. It was my last video, my previous video, the review of this. Chocolate for Fontoplumo with a fine steel nib also and inside it has the KWZ Oscar, which is also an exclusive edition for Fotoplumo, not to match the color of this particular pen, but it actually has some characteristics in common. So, the ink is this. The color is quite similar, it was not made to match the pen, but it works. So. There you have on the top of the, the lid of the box. So, Fontoplume exclusive Oscar. So, this is, or these are the pens that I have with ink for today's video. Now, let's go for the next topic. And the next topic will be new pens. What arrived? Okay, I'm not telling you all the pens that arrived since the last video because you know there's a long time since the last video but I will show you the pens that arrived during the last two months and so first lots of Caveco the Caveco Sport chocolate with for Fontoplume with chrome trim the 
Aveco Sport Chocolate for Fontou Plume with Gold Trim, which is the one that I'm using today. Caveco Sport in Black for Nomos Glass Huta. Oops, and I hit the tripod. The Caveco Sport Macchiato also for Nomos and the Caveco Brass Sport also for normal. So this one I have, these two I have to thank to Fontoplumo, these three I have to thank for Nomos, to Nomos that because they sent it to me. There is another pen which is this one, it was bought, it was a purchase at Cult Pens, it is also special edition and it is the Cavex Sport Regal Purple, which is, it is a very nice color, I, I think, I really like this pen. <clears throat> so, let me keep this because this is the pen that I'm using. Let's put this aside. But there were more pens. There are a Parker 45 in blue. It looks black, but it is blue. It is a model that I really enjoy. I would say that this inflection has something to do with the 45. I got a Parker Rialto in black and I also got a Parker 25 in blue. It's also a very interesting model to write with. Also, I got this very interesting pen. This is a Gravitas pocket pen made of copper, except the section, and it has skulls engraved. And, let me take this out of the way, and I also got three other pens. This, this is a Schiffer No Nonsense Vintage, it's not really vintage, but the model is called vintage because it has gold trim and these characteristics, but it's actually just a regular Schiffer No Nonsense, just with gold trim, and this is another Schiffer No Nonsense with a marble green pattern. So, very similar with this medallion on top of the cap. And finally, I got this pen, which is the Platinum President, with this nice gold nib. So, these were the pens that I got since. The, during the last two months, including this month of June. Now, let me put these aside. Oops, and don't worry, nothing's broken because the pen that fell a little bit was the brass sport. It will not get damaged. And let's go for the previous videos. And about previous videos, I did, I'm, I'm not creating a lot. I have done some um, some unboxing videos mostly, I think. So let me just write here just to show pens, unboxings, some reviews. The last one was this, the Cavexport chocolate by Fontoplume. Also the Pens for the month and pens from the month. So these are my most recent videos. I also made a video about the repair of my Moomblan 149. So not really that many videos lately, but that's it. Then I need to think think about, I will use now this pen, about future videos. So what will come out soon is the pens for June 2022, also the pens from June 2022, some reviews that I need to record soon, and 
I think I will make a video or some videos about pocket pens. I really have lots of pocket pens and it makes sense because there is, at least in my opinion, I don't know what you think, but I think there are very different approaches to pocket pens if we are thinking about German pocket pens or some miniature pens that are not meant to be like pocket and Japanese pens and so on. So I'm thinking about creating something about pocket pens soon. So this is what will come. Now, about what is going on. Lately, there is a lot going on. So, I have to say that I've been a little bit away from the channel. I, it's, it's not that I have kind of a, a burnout from the channel. I didn't lose interest. I just, I've just been having so much personal troubles in my life lately not serious stuff, but I have been very busy and I don't have or the time or the mindset that is perfect to make videos. So most of the times I don't have enough energy to record the videos and I have lots of videos that I want, I really want to do, but sometimes I just can't do it. So it has been around for a couple of months. I hope it will be better and I'm trying really to be back because this is something I really like to do. Additionally, uh, I've been in Barcelona. I was in Barcelona last week, Barcelona, Spain, because I was in a training for my work. It was a very interesting training in risk assessment in nutrition. So really interesting uh, course, but, and this was kind of a bad luck, the course was from uh, Monday to Friday, I came back Friday, I had to come back Friday, but Saturday it was the Barcelona pen show and I had to miss it, so I'm still looking forward to, who knows, one day to go to a pen show in my life. Then, I think that it was in Barcelona because in Spain we are a little bit uh, worried or the authorities are a little bit less worried with Covid that, than in Portugal and I guess I got Covid there. That is why my voice is a little strange um, and that's it. Because of that I am even with less energy than I used to be uh, but I am at home and because I am sick, I can be here and I'm not working, so these days are for a little rest and during that rest I'll try to record some videos to have something working for the next few publishings and I hope I will be, uh, it will help me to be back to the channel, to the channel's usual activity. Finally, one thing that I just want to tell you that is going on is that my Montblanc Meisterstück 149, the one that had the piston a little bit broken, was sent back to Montblanc. I showed you the pen I showed in another video. Uh, I took the Montblanc there because the piston was not working. They fixed it, they replaced lots of parts, but then they left a big gap, at least to me it was a big gap, uh, between the clip and the rest of the cap and I took the pen back and they sent it back to Germany. So maybe one more month for it to come back, I'm not sure. So even if it arrived tomorrow, I couldn't go there because now I'm in isolation. So this is what is going on on my life, on the channel. I hope I'll be back more often to create content because this is what I really enjoy to do. Next topic is the... 
uncommon pen of the day and I will eventually stop making this part here because I don't have many more uncommon pens to show here on this section so I will change it for something else maybe some pen accessories or some pen related stuff it will be fun but today I still have one uncommon pen and that pen is the Flaro Titan and I will show you the pen so this is a pen that I showed you before when I made the unboxing and when I showed you the pens that I received in that particular month I don't remember when I think it was still in 2021 this is the Flaro Titan which is a very big pen you can see there Titan and Flaro so it is a big pen it has that end there this end there they are it has some flat ends and if you ask me what it is really similar to yes to a Montblanc 149 however the this one has flat ends and I don't have a Montblanc 149 here to show you just let me check one definition here on the the video okay can't do it right now um, I'm not sure if the white balance is correct but sorry about that if it isn't I cannot check it now um, so this is the Flaro Titan it was sent to me by another pen reviewer who is called Bogdan he has a channel called the pen collector and he's from Romania he knew that I was very interested in this pen and he sent me one so he, it is here is the pen it has this steel nib marked Flaro and the pen has some troubles here the the piston is a little bit broken but I think I will be able to fix it I didn't have the time yet and I want to do it very carefully because I really want to make to bring this pen back to life I'm sorry I can't compare it with the Mumbla 149 here because it is currently somewhere between Lisbon and Germany or Germany not sure but I have a couple of other pens that remind me of these so I have the Senator President which is not similar to that is actually similar to the Mumbla 149 but then they are all similar I have the Jean Hao 149 and another pen that is the most expensive of this group the Sailor King of Pen so these pens are all I would say inspired on that Mumbla overall look but Mumbla has a number 8 nib so it has a big nib the Senator President has a number six nib so as you can see the nib on the flaro is bigger we have the and the pens are running away rolling away we have the Jin Hao also with a number eight nib and finally we have the let me put it here sorry I'm blocking the light with my hands but I can do this in other way and I have here the Sailor, which has also the Sailor King of Pen, which has also a bigger nib. So the interesting thing about this pen, inspired by the Mumbla 149, is that the nib is a big one, which usually doesn't happen with the other pens that are copies or inspired by. And I would say this is kind of a nice characteristic so this pen as far as I know is a pen that was made in the 1960s it was kind of the uh, flagship pen of this Romanian brand called Flaro and this is the steel nib version but there was also a, a gold nib version that as Bogdan told me it was exclusive for the communist party members 
to, to have. So it is an interesting pen. I think the materials are not that great. Um, but I really I will really try to fix this pen because I want to have it working. It is a very nice example. And sometimes I enjoy to have pens that remind me of other pens. Like this. This is a pen that reminds me of Moon Blanc 149 with some other, so it makes sense to me to have it. When I say it is uncommon, is that because this pen is really uncommon. It's very hard to find, and even when you find one, I'm not sure if it is really that likely that you'll find one in working condition. So, this is the uncommon pen of the day, the Flaro Titan. And finally, let's go for the last two topics. So, I don't think this video will be that long as sometimes these Friday Night Pen Thoughts are, but I'm just starting over with them, so <laughs> give me some... give me your comprehension about this. I will try to do it. So, I have two topics that are really related. Maybe they are just one topic for those questions that I like to make. So, topic number one is when should a pen collection stop? And why do I ask this? <laughs> because I can and because I think it is an interesting topic and what I'm thinking is about when should we stop? We should stop when we have enough pens? Or is there some other uh, things about it? I have to say that uh, I reached a point in my pen collection that when I think now that I have enough pens, I don't really need any more. But what is or how many are enough pens? Maybe we can just have one pen and it is enough. If I want to write a book or something, one is enough. Maybe I can have two because I want one for uh, to write and another one to write in my desk, another one to have in my pocket. I want uh, let me rest, get this one, another one to have green ink and uh, whatever. But I would say that most people will need something between, actually there are people that need zero pens, but let's think that you need one fountain pen. Most people will need something between one and nine fountain pens. This would be more than enough for writing and working with pens. But there are other stuff to it is what are you doing? Are you collecting pens? Are you trying to collect every variation of a model? Or do you have in your mind some pens that you really want to get and you are looking at them? So maybe that's the point. If you ask me, is my pen enough? E my pen collection enough? Yes, it is. And I will show you some of the pens that I have that to me show that show me my collection is really enough. So let's start. I have to say that I have a couple of iconic pens regarding what is uh, the pen history, I would say. One of the pens that I think it is very iconic in my collection is this one. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. I will leave links on the description for the pens that can be bought in some stores. If I know any links, I will leave there on the description. So, this is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. This is an iconic model. But when we think of an iconic model, I think we can change to another brand and think about these Parker Centennial Dufold, which is a modern version of the vintage Parker Dufold. And this is also a very iconic model, in my opinion. But there are more iconic models. Or we can have 
variations of iconic models. This pen was inspired by the vintage Parker Dufold from the 1920s. And I have this one, which is a pen that is a replica of a pen, costumized replica of a pen from the 1920s. So we have the modern Dufold that looks like this. And we have this replica and the vintage look like this also, except for the model of the nib, because this is a modern nib. But this one is all made of copper, which was not available. So I also have this pen that was made specific for me. So it is something that is interesting. And when we think about pens that can be made to our own specifications, we can also think about a pen like this one that I really like, which is a Urushi pen. It is made of wood with a Urushi lacquer, which is the Pentel Samurai Ironwood. It is very, very nice, made of ebonite and ironwood with a lacquer of Urushi. So, this is really a very different pen from everything else I have. So, what do I need more? But I have to say that I have a couple more pens that I really like and I'm happy with them. So, let me just show them to you because I can and I hope you will enjoy. Some of other pens that I really like is the Waterman Karen. Beautiful pen, this color, this, which is coral red, this Beautiful. I like the nib. I like the way the pen writes. I think it is a very beautiful model. But I also have, because I'm speaking about coral, I have this one of the pens that I like the most in my collection, the Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa Coral. Yes, I'm not mistaken. It's, it's a pen by Monte Grappa, but it is called Monte Grappa, the model. And it's really a nice pen. Piston filler and this piston makes noise. Let me put it next to the microphone. And I find it very, very fun. So these are fun models with kind of a color that makes sense to me. And because I'm talking about this, there is another model that I really like, which is the Graf von Faber-Castell Intuition, which fits in the same kind of category of color, but it's not because of it that I have it. I have it because I really enjoy this design with no section. So this was also a grail pen to me. That is something that you may have as a guidance to you. You want to have the pens that you need for your writing activities. You may want some pens because you want to complete collections or you may want pens that will be a grail pen for you. Regarding that part of the pens that will complete collections, I have here this very special Caveco Sterling Sport and it is a very special pen because it's the most expensive pen that I have and it is a, also a, a part of my attempt to have a complete collection of all the modern Caveco Sport models and I really really enjoy these models. So, it makes sense to me to have all the models. This is another variation of collecting. Uh, I will be done if Caveco ever stops making Caveco sports, so then maybe I can stop my Caveco collection. And in a broader way, I may say that it will maybe, until I get to that point, I will not be able to end my pen collection. Another pen that I have to say that it's iconic and I really like to have it. It is like in the same way or in the same stage as the Parker Dufold or the Visconti Homo sapiens. Is this. this is a very special pen. This is the Parker T1 pen made of titan, titanium, and it is. It has an integral nib, which is something that I only know about three models of pens that have these characteristics, and I really, really enjoy it. And for 
Speaking of integral nibs, I have to say that there is another pen that I really enjoy, which is this one. This is the Pilot Miu, which is a pocket pen, and it is fun to have pocket pens also, because then they become big. But this pocket pen also has an integral nib, and it is fun to have two pens with the same kind of characteristic, but with a different philosophy behind them. This is a full-size pen, this is a pocket pen, they are not that different in size, but their concept is a little different, even if the design is similar. Then, I need to put some pens aside, otherwise I'll be full of pens here. I, you know that I like Parker a lot, so Parker will come back with a model that I really enjoy. The Parker 45. This is a flighter version. This is one of the best Parker pens ever made. Best for the price. I really, really like it. And there is also, I have one more Parker here to show you, that is also a very important piece in my collection, which is the Parker 100. And it is, to me, one of the best design, designed models ever by Parker. It is a cartridge pen, gold nib, hooded nib. I really, really enjoy this pen. And it is it reminds me of the Parker 51, but I like this one more than I like the Parker 51. But, again, I have to show you again the Sailor King of Pen, another iconic pen with a very big nib. There is also the Mont Blanc Meisterstück 149. It is also kind of a grail pen for many people. I have one, but it is now in repair. But we can go to another brand that I really enjoy also, the Aurora, with my beautiful modern Aurora Duo Cart in yellow. But I, oh, I like this model so much that I also have this one. This is the Aurora 2 Cart K. And this was a very fun uh, discussion with a, with a viewer, let me call him a friend from the channel and we discussed a lot about these pens and I like to see pens and their vintage counterparts and how they work and so Aurora is really a model that I admire and I'm very happy to have that pen and because I'm speaking of Italian pens there is also this beautiful Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande and this is the Sand. It is a piston filler pen. That piston works there. And it has a gorgeous material. I really love this pen and I'm lucky enough to have one that Leonardo sent to me for review and I was able to keep it in my collection. So this is a pen that is not as iconic as some others because it is more modern, but to me it became also iconic. There is also this one, Schiffer Legacy to uh, Legacy One. It is a very beautiful pen with this diamond-shaped nib, with the optional uh, touchdown filler. It is very comfortable, amazing writer. And just to end this up, I have two other pens. One is this Pilot Silvern with the carp design and with this beautiful big nib with this kind of shape that I really like, this inlaid nib. And there is another pen that was kind of a dream pen to me. For many years it was a grail pen. When I was still not a pen collector, I was just a pen user, I wish I had this pen. This is the Pilot Fermo. This one was belong to Wasky Squirrel and it makes it more valuable to me and Pilot Fermo Green. I love this pen. So I'm very happy and this is the point where I can say yes I have enough pens both in number of pens that I need in the fact of I am having enough iconic models and there are pens that I only edit I also have some very um, considerable 
sub-collection of one particular model. And that will bring us to the topic number two. And about topic number two, I have a little less to show. Maybe I'll try to insert some photos here, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll try that. Um, topic number two is when should, you, should your collection stop? Yes, I could stop it now, but that's the question. However, are there pens you still wish to have in your collection? And the answer to that question is yes, for sure, and I will try to leave photos of the pens here. So, one of the pens is a vintage one. I have a pencil, not here now, but I have the pencil of it, and I really would like to have that fountain pen, but I wasn't able to find it yet. At the source, it is reliable in Europe and so on, which is a Parker Premier Modern. Which, is, which are those Parker from the the thrift time era Parker pens, which are very nice. I really love that model. I really want to have it and I'll try to find a picture and insert it now. There is another pen that I really would love to have. And this, it is a pen that if I could buy for the same price as this one, I would sell this and by the other, which is the Sailor King of Pen Mandarin Yellow. It is a wonderful color, it's now available, I think it is a limited edition, I would love to have it, but I can't afford almost 1000 euros. So, yes, I still have Grail pens. That's why I still have some pens that I wish. There is another pen that I would love to have. And it is the Waterman Edson. In green. It is a wonderful pen with a very beautiful inlaid nib. I would love to have that pen. I always admire that pen when I saw it on stores some years ago. I wish I had them, but they are also very, very expensive. But that green one would really make me happy. There is another pen that I really would like to have and that makes part of the sub-collection is the Caveco Art Sport in violet or purple. I missed to buy that one and that's the only Caveco Art Sport so far that I don't have so I would need it to complete my sub-collection of Caveco Art Sports. There is another pen that I need, I didn't bring the other one here, which is the um, Monte Grappa Mia Spice Explosion, which is a pen that is mostly yellow. I have the Cityscape, which is purple, and I have the Meteor Shower, which is brown. But that material is wonderful, and there is a yellow one, and I need one. I think I need it. So, again, can I stop my collection? Yes, I can. Do I want to stop it? No, not yet, because I still want that few pens in my collection. Also, there is another pen that I'm very happy to, to have. I didn't bring it here, but I wish I have that one, which is the Santini Giant. It's not the inexpensive pen, but it is beautiful. I love Santini pens, at least I have only one, but I'm very, 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 very happy with it. And this giant is a bigger one with a bigger nib. I really wanted to have that pen. So, I 
can stop my collection. I have enough pens. Maybe I can sell pens and still have a very good collection. And I don't need to have that much, that many pens. But yes, there are still pens that I need, that I want to have. Do I need? No, I don't. Do I want? Do I wish? Yes, I do. Will I have them? I'm not sure. I think I'll try to have that Kavec that is very elusive to me and maybe I'll try to have the Montegrappa Mia Spice Explosion. But I cannot be sure about the other ones. But yes, I say that I have all the pens that I want, I have all the pens that I need, but each day or each week or each month there is always some other pen that appears that I also want to have. And so, I think this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found this interesting. I have to say that this is, from all my videos, this is my favorite kind of video. I like to do the unboxings because it is quite exciting. I show you the pens before you for the first time and I try to bring other pens to make comparisons in the moment I open one box. So that's kind of fun. It's exciting. But I like these ones when I can talk about pens, not exactly pens, but some kind of topics around pens. I really enjoy them. I know that many of you also enjoy these kind of very long videos. I couldn't find the time to record them since February. Today I'm back. I'll try to be back more often. I like to do this at least every two weeks. So Friday, every other Friday. I can't promise that, but I'll try. So now all I have to say is thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for not and subscribing my channel during this time I was away and I hope you still enjoy this kind of content and let me know your thoughts because I am sharing mine please share yours on the comment below so see you next time and have a very good day